Hey, this is Tamago. Welcome back to Railing. So in episode 13, we finished this MTR station behind me, both Metro and Cable Car, as well as the Iron Mountain MTR Cable Car station, all the way up there where we used to mine the iron. But as you may see, we still don't have a connection to the Iron Savannah behind me. There you go, the city as we will call it. So yeah, we're gonna have to fulfill this promise that I made, right, with this sign. <laughs> Furthermore, we can also develop some kind of transport system within the Iron Savannah itself, perhaps building some landmarks, and in particular trying to get our food sorted this episode. No more golden carrots. So yeah, we'll see what we can do today. But yeah, my voice has not been doing the best. I'm sorry about that. You might be able to hear it a bit. <laughs> not feeling the best at the moment, but uh, this is the only opportunity I have right now to record, so here we go. <laughs> But yeah, I've, uh, as you can see, I've gotten slightly carried away with the building. Yeah, so this is a bridge design. I mean, I was inspired to build a big bridge like this after seeing the Victoria Bridge on the empty arm server while I was doing the hopping around quest with Jonathan. But yeah, this is supposed to be mimicking a cable stayed bridge. If you look up like types of bridges online, you'll probably find this. Uh, maybe bricks, uh, brick walls are not the best blocks to use to model cables, but I really like the pale red color here. So that's what we'll be going with today. But yeah, we'll get on a building in a bit. I know you guys want rails, so uh, that's what we'll be starting today. Okay, so I made a little bit of a path here all the way to the Iron Savannah where I think we'll be making the downtown station. I'm using gravel over here because we do have the high speed rail mod and gravel will make the carts travel faster actually, making vanilla minecarts more useful, right? And I guess you would expect an express, right, to the city. So that's what we'll be doing today. It's a bit further away, so we want to get there as fast as we can. And the nice thing about the bot is that it will decelerate when you hit corners over here, so you will not uh, derail, which is nice. Don't have to worry about that. You just place as many uh, power rails as you want, basically. So yeah, let's do a little bit of a demonstration, shall we, on how fast they can go. So I'll be using levers as the source of power for this. Okay, let's get a minecart and see how fast we go over here. It does have the nice speedometer down there, <laughs> as you can see. Yeah, pretty fast. I think the maximum from what I can see on a mod page is 40 blocks per second. So I think that's a pretty good speed. I don't want to accelerate too fast though, to make it a bit more realistic. So I think spacing it out like this is quite nice, as you saw before. By the way, as you can see over here, these are being held up by stone brick slabs over here. So yeah, that is most of the tracks done on the bridges. So how are we going to get to the Iron Savannah then? Well, I found this nice little cave opening over here. Just dug it out a bit over here so that the rails can come through. And I think the station can go over here. So there's going to be two. This one goes that way and this one goes this way. So not single tracking in this case, unlike in Legend of the Eyes. Yeah, in general, I like to make my builds like incorporated with the environment because I'm very bad at making interesting things <laughs> on my own. So I think this shape gives it a more organic feel, a bit more integrated rather than something very artificial. Okay, I guess we can do a test drive over here. We're going to go left hand drive because that's the convention we are using in this world. So normal speeds over here where there is some gravel and we should speed up over here where there is some gravel. Slow down a bit again to the corner and speed up again until we reach this corner and we arrive at the station. And in this case, there's nothing stopping us, so we will go the other way as well. Nice bridge view over here. I like that a lot. <laughs> Quite cool, actually. Now that you're actually on the minecart instead of just uh, building it. Okay, cool. Good that works, and I think that is a respectable speed. Somewhat realistic, allows you to enjoy the bridges. Yeah, there's two here <laughs> along the way. Great, now that we know that the journey is working quite fine, nicely actually along the bridges, uh, how do we actually do the stations? Well, I do already have a station design that I made in episode 6a of the Legend of the Eyes series, so that's what we'll be doing today. It is completely vanilla based. So the key idea behind this design is we are going to swap out the rail, pull it back over here and push the block up so that it will push the minecart that way. It's just a design that allows for a flat rail, a bit more realistic. Well. 
<laughs> Maybe this system is not the most realistic, but uh, I like it quite a lot. Yeah, the reason why we need this whole switcheroo thing over here is if we just push up this piston, this rail is going to break. So that's not going to work out. But yeah, the key idea behind this design is just a bunch of redstone timings to make sure that these pull off in the proper order because the first time it needs to pull this out and then push up and then on the other time when it wants to retract it has to do it in the reverse order of timing so we just have some repeaters over here and a redstone pulse extender over here and that should be it as you can see there you go now the last piece of the puzzle is to replicate this on the other side. Now the reason why we replicate this on the other side is because when the minecart goes in this direction, it needs to be stopped by something. This is not enough to stop it alone. So we need to have a similar mechanism to pull out the rail, pull out the block so that we get to stop the minecart. So we just need to wire this to the other side to a detector rail so that it triggers when it is close to the station. Don't need this anymore. I guess also a good uh, preventer for going in the wrong direction. There you go, it's now wired up. Oh, actually, sorry, no, I just flipped this uh, <laughs> uh, pulse extender around. And it seems like the signal is too weak, so we need to increase it a bit. Give it some delay so that it probably will arrive on time. We'll see. Okay, this should work now. There you go, awesome. Two, uh, four ticks might be too long. We'll see how long this takes when we arrive on the other side. All right, I think that's a pretty good time there. And then if you want to go, we just hit this button and off we go. <laughs> yeah, so that's how the station works. So time to just cover this up, replicate this on the other side, and we'll get onto some building, shall we? So yeah, over here I'm just trying to wire the detector rails to the other side and I had to use some redstone torches there because of the tight space that we have. We have these two stations facing face to face. So we gotta get a bit creative with using more vertical space. And here comes the building. I tried to use a similar palette as the Iron Savannah MTR station before. So we have the Acacia palette as well with the bricks going around there and the deep slate stairs. Use some terracotta there for the sign, and that's the color of the line in this case, and some glowstone for some light with a trapdoor covering it. Pretty happy there with the use of the hanging sign there from Farmer's Delight. Thought that it fit quite nicely there instead of having a sign on the floor. Over here, the ceiling, I'm just trying to terraform it a bit to have a bit of texture and gradient from the dark to light instead of it being a very abrupt transition from what I made to the cave that was already there. Next up is to finish the bridge connecting the MPR station with the rest of the iron savannah. Over here I am adding a beam made out of acacia stairs for support and notice the stone brick stair at the corner there for additional support as well. The common floor pattern I used in these bridges is an upper stone slab in the middle surrounded with glass on left and the right to add transparency. The upper half slab gives a bit of depth when seen from below as you see over here. And to add some light, I just complete the upper half slab when there's a lantern hanging from it. Finally are the cables for the bridges. I initially wanted to make all of them out of brick walls, but I ran out of bricks, so I needed to use other types of walls, such as cobblestone walls on the back there, and as you are about to see, deep slate tile walls on the right there. Unfortunately, the recording did not finish, so here are the other things that I did. So over here, I decorated a tunnel a bit with some cobble deep slate as a frame and some stone brick stairs here to add some depth, some variation of color as well, especially with the ceiling here, inspired by a build on the MTR server. I would never used diorite before, but seeing the polished one looked okay, I think it adds a nice ceiling here, a bit brighter, in contrast to the other darker grays. And over here on the other side, also followed a similar pattern on this wall over here, holding up the dirt, I suppose. Have a small fence here to get uh, some light. And here's the same stair pattern on the outside. Oh, and I suppose I haven't talked about this bridge because I basically finished it entirely off camera. So the idea here is to have a smaller bridge. This is a similar floor pattern over here, except we have the glass in the middle and the stone brick slab slightly lower to hold the gravel. And we have some beams over here supporting the bridge from acacia wood. Some light in the middle, some blocks covered with acacia trapdoors to hide away the slightly, you know, coarse texture and also adding a bit of depth. 
and over here some stone slabs because I wanted to have some kind of guardrails, but I didn't want to block the view as much as possible, especially with minecarts, which aren't very high off the ground. So I thought stone slabs would be a pretty good compromise between a guardrail and also preserving the view. Also having alternating, so kind of like a castle wall. And I basically said almost everything I wanted about this. I ended up using blue terracotta down there to indicate that that is where you will have to place a minecart to get it started. These were gained from episode 11 when trading with the masons to trade some quartz. And over here we also have some yellow glazed terracotta, which I'm also assuming is from the same source. This is like a level crossing basically because I want to keep this looking clean instead of having going below or above. And you have this nice use of sign here to look left for crossing. And on the other side, look right before crossing. And this just nicely transitions out into the village. And I think this can be a good place to build our kitchen. Oh, and I forgot to decorate the one on the MTR station itself. So let's just quickly do that. The pattern here is to have some terracotta over here. Some alternating stairs over here. I guess you can place that in the corners as well. And the top have some light brick walls on the side here. Trap door over there. And actually it might be nice if we just have a little passageway to the back area over here. So I may just leave it open like this. And the next station here is downtown. Like so. All right, let's do a slight change of pace over here from the rail building that we have been doing to some farmer's delight stuff. So I did briefly mention building a kitchen around here. Probably gonna do that along this slope to avoid as much exterior building as possible because I am bad at that. But yeah, the general idea is to have some kind of like kitchen area down here in the city. So kind of like a restaurant and then maybe some crops and greenhouses along the hills there to grow the plants. Of course, it doesn't have to be separated. There are crops growing over here, but uh, you know, we need an excuse to connect things. So uh, that's what we'll be doing here. <laughs> in terms of building style, I'll probably try to blend in whatever is already around here. So for example, I may take that roof over there. Some of the blocks like the terracotta, if it's not too expensive. And of course, the acacia wood. And I think importantly, we can try to incorporate as many of these Farmer Delights building blocks as possible, including some of these really nice canvas signs. All right, over here, I'm just trying to draw some kind of frame. Not sure if this is a bit too big. I noticed the ceiling is would be quite high already, but uh, we'll see how this goes. I do want to make some kind of like two story floor and I'm trying to make the outer area is more interesting. Sorry, the outer aesthetic here by adding some diagonals and the different shape here instead of just having a flat area, having a slightly dented area and maybe like some kind of elevator shaft over here. Yeah, I'm already liking the view here so far. <laughs> Over well, here, I'm trying to clear out the area just right in front of this lower area here. Just kind of cornering it off, or sorry, bordering it with this acacia log here, this beam. And I think this whole area is just going to be the second floor. So the first floor is going to be quite minimal with this area. Probably just some kind of lobby, maybe a cashier over here for the restaurant. And perhaps, yeah, we can have the lift over here, as I said before. And I think maybe some stairs this time, you know, for those who can use it to save electricity and be more healthy. Okay, let's start with something that I know I definitely want, which is the elevator in this position here. I'm still not sure about the rest, so I will leave that to later. So as in previous episodes, we're going to lay down the floor on the same level over here, just one block up. And then all of this is going to be the elevator tracks. Place the door over here. We may want the third floor here, perhaps for like sightseeing, but uh, we'll see about that later. We can always add it when we are ready for that. Seems that these display panels are slightly bugged and don't drop when you destroy them, but oh well, we'll have to deal with that and just be careful. And I think we have to place it against this for it to properly place. There you go. You can take a refresher over here to spawn in a new elevator. Right click it again to do the whole offsetting thing. And let's just bring it out of the way for now so that we don't have to deal with it. Do the same slab thing over here. Do a little bit of stone bricks over here as an outline. I have some elevator buttons over here and we can link these up to the floor like so. And perhaps add some light over here with some walls over there. Yeah, what to do as the floor? Hmm. I think we may have a light outline over here in this case with some smooth stone slabs. See how that looks. Yeah, let's take inspiration from one of these four, shall we? 
It seems that they are using a solid acacia floor. This is just an acacia of blank floor, which is slightly too bright for what I have in mind. So let's just try a cobblestone floor. Also add a little bit of light. Okay, let's try to build a countertop, shall we? So maybe about this size with some acacia slabs. Trap door here to enter. I do still have a little bit of carpet. Maybe a little bit of a chair. Some bookshelves. Maybe a little bit of a pot here with a flower. Nice blue to contrast with the orange. Maybe an item frame with a book here to indicate like the sign-in sheet. You know, the reservations or something. And uh, I think we gotta do the walls before we know what to do with the rest of this. Alright, I had to take a reasonable detour there to get the terracotta from the mesas and yeah, I just ended up going for some red sand as well while I was there. But yeah, I want to copy what you have over here with the village house with the terracotta. I think it'll look pretty nice with the rest of the colors. Let's try a different color here on the back. Just add a bit of that contrast. Alright, I realize it's looking a bit plain so we may need to add some kind of texture in the middle like from these planks here that are similarly looking. Maybe add some more light here. And I think similarly to the before, we can do some kind of abstract art thing, like in the MTR station. And I've basically left out no space for stairs, have I? <laughs> uh, I guess we could put it back here. And I think we're going to do a similar t by 3 area here, similar to the elevator that is also surrounded by the stone bricks here, just for consistency. Let's give this some color with some of these stairs. Probably would want to use some slabs here to connect these spots to save a bit on space because we are quite in a tight area here. We have a slightly awkward area over here, but uh, we need this so that we can actually cross over as so. Or hold on, let me try to remake this, see what we can do. Because before we started in this direction, what if we started on the side like this? Aha, there you go. That's much better. <laughs> nice. Okay. And perhaps a slightly different color over here. Another terracotta wall. And we'll use like our last six bricks over there. <laughs> Pretty nice, I think. I think there can be a slightly lower ceiling in this area. So let's try to replace it with a deep slate. Hmm, so what do you think? <laughs> I thought it would be nice to have a darker ceiling here because we would have a relatively light floor. So it's a different shade added to the build. Or what if we use these upper half slabs? Maybe they'll look better from below. And there you go. There's uh, still the border up there. But yeah, last but not least is the stairwell. I left this out to the end because I wasn't happy with the initial iterations. But basically we have the stone brick stairs on the side here. And this creates this kind of like vertical slab effect alternating pattern and on the back we have the wall pushed back with white terracotta as well as some fences and uh, light so as a pattern in the back there and we also have this drop over here so we can directly drop off if we don't want to go down all the way through the stairs yeah i think i would call the first floor done for now Okay, so I got started on the second floor over here using a similar design as down there, some principles as well. So we have a nice view over here, that's why I used a bunch of glass, some diorite to contrast with the floor. And here is the interesting part, which is going to be the kitchen. Yeah, because I was trying to adapt to the shape of the hills, we end up having these curved uh, beams, which I think is, makes it will make it very interesting here with the background over here being curved as well. Let me just complete this floor over here. I'm going to use one of the images from the Farmer's Delight like mod page as a reference and use a bunch of cobblestone on the ground, which I think makes sense when there's a lot of fire. And uh, I think this wall can be replaced by a terracotta. This could be the colors of our restaurant, actually, thinking about it. Let's put some light there for the stone. Let's add a bit of greenery over here. Not that it's very green in the savannah. <laughs> yeah, ceiling is a bit tough. Not sure what to use for it. Let's try to go light again over here. And I think the rest we can use some glass. 
you know, bring in a little bit of natural light and we can have some greenery in the ceiling as well. All right, let's bring in some of the farmer's delight blocks, shall we? So first, I think we can have a couple of these stoves. So that's a bunch of campfires you have to make and bricks. Fortunately, we gathered some clay before from the lake. And I think we can have some campfires over here with some stoves on the top. That is a lot of wooden shovels. <laughs> there you go. Three more stoves and three skillets. Oh, we're out of bricks again. Sizzling hot. And you could also use this as a weapon, by the way, which I find very funny. <laughs> okay, so we also need a place to do some chopping. So we're going to make some acacia cabinets over here. Hmm, we may have a bit too much orange over here already. All right, what about a spruce one? I think that looks a bit better, yeah? And of course, you got to have some chopping boards. Unfortunately, I don't have a knife over here. I do have one at home, but uh, for now, let's just get an iron knife. Ta-da. Oh, actually, yeah, you can right, shift right click for it to, you know, have it nicely cutting through the board like that. But this is probably where we'll be supplying our food and perhaps just some more storage up here. Oh, someone wants to ride the train as well. Oh, it turns out I do have the knife in my inventory in my backpack, actually, but uh, I'll keep that to myself because it's a bit powerful. <laughs> okay, let's actually try to get some Farmer's Delight stuff in. So first, I think we're going to try the basket. This is pretty nice for catching your foodstuffs when you are chopping. So let's say if I try to chop some cabbage, you'll see that it will go to the basket. There you go. So it keeps it uh, nice and messy free. Another thing we can make is these tatami mats. So it seems that they are made from tatami blocks. We need some more canvas. There you go. Here's what it looks like. Very nice. These are mostly used for seating. So I think I'll save them for up there where I have some plans up there. <laughs> we also have the canvas rug over here, which uh, I think could be nice over here in the chopping area. I'm just copying what is already there in Farmer's Delight, <laughs> although we don't want it too close to the fire. We also have some ropes which are actually used mostly as a mining thing. So let's say you're on a ledge and you could just actually build this downwards like so and climb down safely to your destination. But of course you can always just use it for decoration, you know, perhaps placing some in the background as well and in these corners. There's also the safety net which is made out of a couple of ropes. I'm pretty sure this one helps negate fall damage if I'm not mistaken. So I just jump over here. There you go. It's like a nice and bouncy thing. But of course, again, we can use it as decoration. Let's say in the ceiling over here. It's pretty nice with the leaves, actually, adding some more layer of depth. And uh, other stuff here, I think, are just decorative. Like we also have some of these crates we can put. Yeah, you can't interact with them, but yeah, they're just there. They're kind of nice. You know who you are if you're here. <laughs> but yeah, those crates are just crafted from a 3x3 grid. They're basically the block equivalents of your crops. And last but not least, we also have these signs. Yeah, these are canvas signs. These are nicely colored. Look at that canvas texture. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is the way we are. Can you stack them? Oh, you can. That's exciting. But yeah, I think these are going to be the way we... Oh, oops. But yeah, I think this is going to be the way that we are going to place the menu. Let's try out some colors, though. I wonder if the text is still readable on this. Oh, okay, it's white. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, I think we can use those signs for like special deals and whatever. But yeah, let's see what we want to make. I think one of the things I want to have is these burgers here or like sandwiches. So I think our signature over here is going to be our hamburger, which I'm going to call Pat's Hamburgers or Hamburger. Hi, Pat, if you're watching. <laughs> there you go. Just going to put that over there. And I think for a light snack, we're going to have those egg sandwiches. Yeah, egg sandwiches were the sandwiches that I used to make back then. It's very easy. You just need eggs. It's free, basically, if you just have bread. I think other things can have our chicken sandwich. 
and also the bacon sandwich. Some sushi is nice. I do like sushi, although they don't have a tamago uh, sushi. Oh, hello. You now know where the channel name comes from. Ooh, this one's kind of fun. <laughs> Could have a big meal as well. Did I spell that right? Yes, okay. I think I also like some pasta, so we'll have some of this. Noodle soup is always nice. And perhaps some fish too. Yeah, these are mostly random, I guess. Like, you can always cook anything else that we want, but yeah, some ideas on the list here. Oh, I forgot my fried rice. Can't leave that out. And ratatouille. Oh, missing the eater. Gonna have to cut the corner here. Yeah, ratatouille, I think, was one of the first Harmer Delights foods that I made in Legend of the Ice with Zeal. Some light bites over here, I think. Some dumplings and cabbage rolls. But yeah, I think all of this can be a nice guide in terms of what we need to build to be able to produce these foods easily. So yeah, look forward to that in the coming episodes. Play some tables over here. Not sure if we can fit any over here. Facing out the window. Okay, looking good. And uh, perhaps I should put some signs that this is the place to order and that they could pick up here. Man, look at that, all those angles and hanging on the ropes. They got that right. Look at that. Beautiful. You just put a smiley face there so it's not screaming at them. And uh, I think I would call this floor done. Okay, so here we're at the third floor, covered this up with the same roof pattern or similar as the villages. Have some glass fences over here so we can't jump over them. Fortunately, they don't go diagonally like this, so we're going to have to use some panes over here. The, the idea I had around here was to have some kind of like family area where you could picnic. So perhaps you could have a stove, a pot over here, you know, the whole gear to do some barbecues or whatever. Now, from what I can see online, these tatami mats are usually placed indoors, but uh, we'll give this a try. Now, they also have the half block, so these are just like a single square. Pretty useful if you want to have like, let's say, some seating over here. The only issue here is the rain, right? <laughs> so let's see what we can do. It's some kind of like umbrella type thing. I think it looks uh, just slightly derpy, but uh, I think it's going to have to do. But yeah, I just saw this online and I think iCraft MC was also doing this. Yeah, there you have it. I think that's the third floor done and the whole built thing done for now. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to show it off in the night time. I know it's a bit dangerous as you just saw, but yeah, look at this. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good at night. I'm happy with it. And there's another one. <laughs> okay, well, thankfully we have a lot of dirt to fix this up. And I think we can call this place the downtown kitchen. What about that? Let's just place over here, second floor, the restaurant, third floor. Rooftop. It's called Rooftop Picnic. And wrap a sign over here that says welcome. And last but not least, shall we craft our first Pat's Burger? That'll be fun. <laughs> so we got the cabbage already. So we need some onions and tomatoes as well as bread. But yeah, that's why I had to go back to base before, so that all our foodstuffs are accessible via the system. By moving the chest to the storage system. Yeah, let's uh, cook some beef over here. Grab our bread. And here is our patty. All right. We just combine this in the crafting table with some cabbage leaf. And here's our first burger. Look at this. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Put the knife back. But yeah, I think that's going to be all for this episode. You notice that we still don't have the necessary resources to produce those hamburgers nicely. So next steps would be things like making a greenhouse for the crops. But then you may notice a slightly different style this episode. It's a bit more first person and live commentary on the building that we are doing today. Went slightly overboard, I think, so we have a slightly longer episode today. And of course, I also have a slightly broken voice for like half of the video. Unfortunately, I've not been feeling the best, but this is like the only time I have time to record in recent times. So uh, we're going to have to make do with this. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. This is definitely out of my comfort zone with a lot of building, but I think it's been pretty fun. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day and as always, God bless.